Hey, it's Brenda Turner from brendaturner.com. This is your autoimmunity playbook. And if you're new to my channel, I am a health and fitness enthusiast, nutritionist, personal trainer, and life coach, teaching women and everybody how to take deep care of themselves. I've learned so much about how to take care of the body and my own personal experience with autoimmunity has helped me even further deepen my knowledge. As you can see from the, from the chapters and from the length of this video, this is long. However, I'm just gonna give you everything that is of use, of value. So I wanna start with my own personal story and my, just briefly, I'm just gonna share my own personal story with autoimmunity and then we're gonna get into getting it healed. 2016, I had a tiny patch of hair come out of my head and I went to the dermatologist. They said, yeah, that's called alopecia areata and, and we don't know what's gonna happen with it. And I said, what, what is this? And then sure enough, I saw that patch grow and I started to get panicky. And then I saw it grow even more and I started to get even more panicky. And then it got to the size of a softball. And I was terrified. It was about this, this big. I'll put some pictures if I can find them. I've also had subsequent um, labels. I'm gonna call them labels put on for different autoimmune issues. And I dealt with various symptoms from brain fog, fatigue, malaise, depression, the hair patches, digestive issues, and a bunch of other autoimmune issues, nervous system dysregulation. I could go on and on, but if you have autoimmunity, you know that the symptoms are vast and vague and weird. I stand before you healthier than I've ever been in my life. I'm healthier in every way, in mind, body, and spirit. Let you know my history, where I'm coming from, what I have to offer. Let's get into the healing process. The autoimmunity playbook has three parts, and these three parts are not negotiable. Autoimmunity must be healed, just like everything, with mind, body, and spirit. That is because you are a mind, body, and spirit. So a lot of us, when we get autoimmune issues, we go straight to the body. We worry about the body, we focus on the body, we Google symptoms about the body, we're just obsessed with the body. Your body didn't cause your autoimmune issues, guaranteed. It did not stem from your body. This isn't a random thing that just poof, life hit you with. I promise you this. It's not bad to look at the body and focus on the body, but you, you can't just focus on the body and expect to heal because the two most important aspects of healing take place on the mind and spirit level. So this video is gonna be in three parts, mind, body, and spirit, body, mind, and spirit. Those three parts, cannot be, if you take one out, it falls. If you take another one out, it falls. You have to have all three in line is what I'm telling you. Let's get to starting with body. And why are we starting with the body if it's not the most important aspect, which it's not. Mind and spirit are in the long run gonna be your ultimate healing tools. But we have to start with the body because it's very hard to make a jump when you're in pain. It's very hard when you're in that state to make a jump to, I'm healed, everything's fine, I feel okay, I'm happy and joyful and all the stuff that we're gonna talk about later on. It's so hard to do that when you've got holes in your boat. So right now, we've gotten to the point where there's holes in your boat and it's feeling like you're sinking, right? and your symptoms are bothering you. And it's very important to get those symptoms under control if we're to make any progress, any real progress in our ultimate healing process. And this part is very important. The body is very important. So we have to start doing things, taking measures, taking steps to heal the body. And I'm gonna to talk to you about diet right now. And the diet I highly recommend to you after 20 years in nutrition and studying nutrition, when this happened to me, I studied and I read studies. I read scientific literature, all the scientific literature I could get my hands on. And what I found is AIP is the way 
Autoimmune Protocol, AIP, is very healing for those of us with autoimmunity. And to give you a synopsis of the AIP diet, I put a quick start guide in the description bar. That's gonna give you everything you need to know in less than 20 pages about how to eat for AIP. Real quick, AIP is the elimination of all potential allergens and irritants. It's also the addition of copious amounts of fruits, vegetables, proteins, organ meats, and healthy fats. Please do not focus too much on the long list of things you can't eat, which are the eliminated foods are eggs, dairy, wheat, and gluten all grains that's even the healthy grains legumes nightshades spices made with nightshades so that's paprika ketchup cayenne pepper hot sauces stabilizers gums xanthan gum guar gum all these gums are irritating the gut lining the health of your gut is one of the primary factors in autoimmunity so you've got a compromised gut lining when you're when you're in stress you or sadness or grief or whatever, you lose the, the integrity of the junctions in your gut lining. The villi start to get shorter and the, the tight junctions that keep food in your intestines start to open up. And these little openings create opportunities for food, like that cheese that you might have had on your sandwich that's filled with grains and dairy and all that stuff to get in your bloodstream. Now it's in your bloodstream and you've already got a heightened immune system. We have to get the gut healthy and that's very important. And the AIP diet is gonna help you do that. Let's get into supplements. Supplements, the first thing I'm gonna show you is glutamine. This is um, from Bulk Supplements on Amazon. Glutamine is great for gut health. Also, collagen peptides or any kind of collagen protein. This one's just an off-brand by Central Market. And the Vital Proteins one is great. All of them are pretty comparable. Any collagen protein that you can get your hands on, that's also great for gut health. Anything from ancestral supplements is great. This is beef brain and liver. Multivitamin. We've got the Pure Encapsulations Nutrient 950 with vitamin K multivitamin. This brand is free of all potential allergens, irritants, Pure Encapsulations, HCL, pepsin. This is gonna help you to digest your food, so you take one of these with your meals. Pancreatic enzymes. These, the enzymes with HCL is more or less what your digestive system would be doing if it was impeccably healthy, but if you have autoimmunity, it's not. It's just not, it can't. There, there's no way that you can have autoimmunity and have a healthy gut. It just doesn't happen. You have some kind of compromised gut health. Those are the supplements. And now let's talk about movement. It's time for an up close and personal shot because this is the, the only lens I have right now. <laughs> so you're getting way up close and personal. Continuing with the body, we're out for a walk. I wanted to take you on a quick little walk. Kind of break up, get out of the house, break it up a little bit. Get out for a walk every day to move your body. A daily walk without headphones is very healing and if you need your headphones, if you absolutely need them and you want to listen to something, make sure it's something that really, really lifts you up. However, part of autoimmunity happens when we are suppressing our emotions and our thoughts. One of the key triggers for autoimmunity and for all diseases is when you're not present in your body. When you're not present in your body and you're up here too much, that gives, that gives away your, your energy. There's something in the Eastern traditions that they call chi or prana or shakti. And when you're present, you have all of it inside of you. When you're listening to other people talking in your ear all the time, it's okay sometimes, but when you're out for your walks, it's good to keep all of your chi and your energy and your shakti and your prana, keep it all inside. Gather the, the, the beauty of, I mean, it's a cloudy day right now, but there's trees everywhere. There's a beautiful sky above me, even though it is cloudy. 
And when I'm walking, I'm taking this stuff in. I'm listening to even when there's, there's, a, there's a road nearby, even with that road nearby, there is a presence. There is something underneath that doesn't change ever. The, the ever present moment that you're getting access to when you're in the present moment can heal your mind. I, I just wanna show you, there's, there's some trees over there. This tree, okay? And there's a beauty to it. It's behind this ugly fence and an ugly brick wall, but there it is. It's there, it's been there for decades. And it's there every day. And we kind of just walk past, we, we kind of just walk past these beautiful things all around, all around us and ignore them. You know, we might not notice these things. All right, we're in my yoga nook. This is a little yoga area because I want to encourage you to get into the practice of yoga. There's a new form of research, a new field of research in medical science called psychoneuroimmunology. Psychoneuroimmunology is a study of basically how your mind and your body interact with each other. Psychoneuroimmunology is finding that your nervous system plays a huge role in your immune function. There is so much research now showing that yoga helps to regulate this, these processes. It does so by conditioning the vagus nerve. There's something called a vagus nerve that runs from the base of your skull down through your spine. It's also connected to aspects of your face. Your vagus nerve helps to regulate your autonomic nervous system and gets you into either sympathetic or parasympathetic. And yoga is a very powerful way to train your, your vagus nerve and your nervous system to be in harmony, to be in a state of peace. These tight muscles in your body create energetic patterns. So for instance, if you're a person who's constantly in a turtle shell, this was me for a long time. I'm exaggerating, but I carry a lot of tension in my traps. So this, this state that my body's in, this constant energetic tension, bracing, you know, anxious, this, this state impacts my mind. So my mind is getting feedback from my body. My body's getting feedback from my mind. So I'm getting tighter and tighter and my mind's getting tighter and tighter. So yoga gets you out of these energetic patterns. Maybe you're slumped over because you're very beat down and depressed. Yoga can help open your chest up and get your mind more in that state of openness and relaxation. If you're in autoimmunity, you're low on reserves. Your body is lacking in energy and to give it these practices of yoga and Qigong and Tai Chi and somatic dance, it's giving you the energy back. You're filling your cup up with energy. Okay, we're in my bedroom and that's because I'm gonna show you some very important energy work. This is the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning and that is the work of Donna Eden. She has written this amazing book and she's an energy healer who healed herself of MS. And I know that everything I'm about to show you is so unbelievable and seems so out there and woo woo. I'm a skeptic just like you are. However, just try the things I'm about to show you and see if you don't feel better. What I'm, what I'm gonna show you is just real quick, my quick little energy routine that I got from this book. You, you kind of have to put together your own. And so this is what I put together at K27. This is called the three thumbs, the K27. 27 points so you you tap on the hollows right beneath your collarbones tap those for about 20 I count to 20 1 2 3 7 8 9 10 until 20 and that gets the energies flowing in the right way and then the three thumbs are k27 you could just tap k27 and that's fine and then you tap the center of your chest I'm sorry I'm tapping you right now but right in the center of your chest, this is your thymus gland. Okay, and then you're tapping 
underneath your breasts. Here's where the, the top of my rib, rib cage is and then I follow it maybe about two inches down, tap those points. So do this with me, just try it. I know this seems weird, but just give it a try and see what happens, okay? So even right there, I get a deep breath and a sigh of relief when I do the, the three thumps. So that's how I start. Then the next thing I do is, if you have autoimmunity, you have, according to Donna Eden, a triple warmer. Your triple warmer is out of balance. So your triple warmer is a meridian point that goes from your temple down the back of your ear, down the back of your shoulder, down your arm and off your ring finger. So for most people, they want to charge up their immune system. So they'd be tracing it upwards, but we want to cool off our triple warmer. So we're going to press into the temple, go behind the ear with some pressure, trace it down to where the jawline is, down the back of the neck, down the arms and I use my whole hand so that I'm not missing anything. And then I grab the ring finger and I just do it like this. In real time, it's pretty quick. I just do it like three to six times. And then I do it on the other side. One, just try it with me and see what happens. The first time I ever did this, I did notice a subtle shift and then I did it again and I was like, wow, this actually does work. So that's, that's that. And then there's a heart meridian. So I take my hand starting at the armpit and then I go up the bottom of my hand off the pinky, up and off the pinky. Just, we're just tracing the meridians. Okay. And then we're going to do scalp pulls. <laughs> with a with a special guest. <laughs> this I can't do for real on my forehead, but you start at your forehead and you pull the skin apart with some pressure. And you want it to be comfortable, but you don't you don't want to hurt yourself, but just enough pressure that you can just kind of feel like a massage. Then you go down the center of your scalp, down the center of your scalp, down the back of your head all the way down down to your neck. And then once you get to the bottom of your neck, you just hang your hands there for a minute. <sighs> Take a deep breath in and out. I know that all of this looks ridiculous. Believe me, I know. I think it's way less ridiculous to open my mind to the fact that there's energy systems flowing through my body that are called meridians, that when I trace them, I feel a lot better, I notice. I think that's way less ridiculous than saying, I'm gonna get sicker and sicker for the rest of my life and, and I'm gonna be beholden to the doctors who give me nothing but pills that suppress my symptoms. And that's the only game plan I've got, you know? Like that doesn't make any sense to me at all. I, I'm going with Donna Eden. I'm going with the woman who healed herself of MS. I'm going with this energy system that, that makes me feel better, that makes me feel good. And I, again, I know it looks ridiculous, but that's because we live in a society that is ridiculous and that is kind of insane. Um, I, think, I think that if you just keep your mind open and just give it a try, it couldn't hurt is what I'm telling you. It works for me personally. And I think that it has a lot of promise for all of us to start incorporating more energy work into our healing process. Now let's talk about the mind. Your mind can either cause disease or contribute to your disease and make it worse, or it can aid you in the healing process. And up to this point, if you have autoimmunity, your mind has been contributing and if not causing many, if not all of the symptoms and the ailments that you're currently facing. Your body and your mind are one, they're one unit. So even if you don't necessarily believe what I'm saying outright, the, the fact is, literal, literal fact, your body and mind are one unit. So your mind impacts directly the things that happen in your body. And at this point in science, there's no denying it. There's the study of epigenetics, wherein 
It's showing how we can turn off certain genes and turn on certain genes. One of the main controllers of how your genes express themselves is right up here. So I wanna give you a very important model that's gonna help you to heal. All of us, all of us, all of us have a shape to our mind. Your mind has a, has a shape to it. Think of it as like a snowflake that's unique to you. So your mind has a shape to it. And the shape of your mind, let's say your mind is, you know, it's, I'm, and this isn't literal, obviously. This is not literal. Your, your literal mind doesn't have a physical shape, but it does, however, have shapes in a metaphorical term. So you've got, let's say up here is your beliefs, and right here are your thoughts, your thought patterns, thought habits, and right here is your emotional patterns and the emotions that you tend to carry, and right here is your perceptions and perspectives. This is your how you interact with the world, how you experience the world. Um, your perspectives and your perceptions are, are a part or an offshoot of your mind. Your mind has a million different little shapes and offshoots. What contributed to these shapes? This is the shape of a mind. What contributed to the shape of this mind, the beliefs that this person has, the thoughts, the perceptions and perspectives, uh, the emotional tones is every single thing that's happened to this person in their life. This is their parents, this is their friendships, this is the traumas that they might have experienced, this is the place they grew up in, this is their gender, this is the, the people that they've run into throughout their lives, this is the things that they've studied, this is TV, this is commercials, this is magazines, this is just life. Life, life happening. This is like a deluge of life happening and it's, these are like little shrapnel things that shape, ping, 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 shape your mind. All of us have a shape to our mind. If you're in autoimmunity, your mind is, sh is shaped in such a way that it's creating disharmony in your body. So, for instance, you might have thought patterns. You might have thought patterns, like if this is the shape of our mind and you've got thought patterns that every single day you're having thoughts like, what if I don't make it? I'm not good enough. And some of these aren't so blatant that they're like in the forefront of your mind, but some of these thoughts are in there. They're happening. I'm not good enough. Life sucks. Life is a grind. This is only gonna get worse. And these looping thoughts, these looping thoughts contribute to the emotional part of your body, the energetics. And the energetics contribute to the perceptions and perspectives, and that contributes to your beliefs, and that contributes to your thoughts. And all of these things happening up in your mind send signals to your body. So we're getting signals sent to the body. And the, these are just cascades of signals and chemicals going to your body. And then your body, your, your body, which is about on point for the scale of this, you got your little body, getting a deluge of negative thought loops, beliefs that are not serving you, emotions that are really crunchy and toxic, and most of us are suppressing our emotions, and then perspectives and perceptions that are not serving you. So your, the shape of your mind is going into how your body is the state of your body, how your body is, the health of your cells, the health of your hormones, the health of your nervous system, your thoughts, something like, I'm not going to make it. This life is dangerous. I'm not safe. That thought is a fear thought. And that fear thought has an effect on your nervous system. Your nervous system has an effect on your immune system. So, all of these things, if you have autoimmunity, all of these things, the shape of your mind 
the current shape of your mind has greatly impacted the input of what's happening from your mind to your body, the kind of relationship you have in your body, your cells, your hormones, your organs, your metabolic processes, all of it. It also impacts your relationship with life. So what do we do if we're in autoimmunity and we've got some haywire mental shapes causing a big problem in what's happening in our body? What are we to do? You might hear all this and think, I better clean all this up. And yeah, definitely get it cleaned up. You can definitely clean all these things up, your per perceptions, perspectives, beliefs, thoughts, and emotions. And there's other aspects and facets to the mind, by the way. It, it goes on forever. We could talk about um, memories and traumas and all the stuff that's carried on in the mind. All that stuff impacts your immune system. But none of this stuff matters. This is all mind stuff. You don't have to worry about nitpicking every thought you have. You don't have to worry about nitpicking every belief you have. You don't have to worry about your perspectives and perceptions, and you don't have to worry too much about just changing the shape of your mind because it's impossible. It would be an impossible feat left to your own devices. If you're trying to get there with your mind, you're never going to get there is what I'm trying to tell you. So you can't fix a faulty mind structure with your mind. It's impossible. You can't do it. It's like taking a broken tool and trying to use that broken tool to fix a broken tool. It's impossible. So what are we to do? Well, the answer is simple. We have to get to healing the mind with the only thing that can heal a mind and that is presence. We can call it other names. We can call it God. We can call it universe. But really, the bottom line is presence. All of this stuff, they can be and will be healed with adequate amounts of presence. The present moment heals all. The present moment is all there is. It has the ultimate power to heal. You don't heal your cuts. Your cuts heal themselves from this presence, from the all that isness from right now. And so what happens when you start being present through the practices I'm gonna offer in a minute is you start to notice your patterns. And the more that you start to notice from a place of a witness and a presence, the easier it becomes to kind of, the changes just take place naturally. It's not so much of an efforting process. So. What I'm gonna to recommend to you is a meditation practice. And if you're in autoimmunity, you need meditation. You absolutely have to meditate. The form of meditation you use doesn't necessarily matter all that much, but you should absolutely meditate. Meditation is key. I have a diagram in uh, my Dream Life workshop, but I'm gonna draw it here anyway. So this is your mind, the shape of your mind, without meditation. It's chaos. It's pain. It's trauma. It's all type. You're at, you're basically, like I said, you're operating from the paradigms of your entire life, your parents and their parents and their parents, your, your ancestors, you're going off of their pain. You're going off of the pain of culture and society. You're going off of your past traumas. It's the momentum and the chaos and all this stuff in your mind that you're now in this kind of a mind shape trying to get your mind clear in this mind state using your mind is impossible. But this is your mind without meditation. And then this is your mind after some time of meditation. I promise you, I guarantee it. You're gonna have thoughts happening and there's gonna be ripples in there, but all of it will, will feel and be a lot more like this. It might, it'll be more like a, one pebble dropping in a pond and some ripples. It won't be like a deluge. And if it is a deluge, at least you'll be on this aspect of it. You'll be out here experiencing more of a wholeness than 
being in, oh my God, autoimmunity, life, survival, chaos, fear, terror, anger, sadness, rage, and all those emotions are fine, but we don't have to be like in the throes of, you know, all of the chaos of the mind. So we have to get to meditating because we want to be in a harmony state. When your mind is, when the shape of your mind has reached a state of harmony, your body will be in harmony. So there's two methods of meditation that I'm going to talk about today. And I have to, I just have to talk about meditation. So the first that I'm going to talk about is Vipassana. Vipassana meditation, I'm just going to draw a V here. Vipassana meditation is really good for you if you have a lot of trauma to deal with. If you have a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of just childhood stuff, Vipassana meditation is what I'm going to recommend to you. The other form of meditation is single state one-pointed meditation, so I'm just gonna put a one there. There's about a million other forms of meditation, but I'm just gonna keep it on these two because these two, I think, are the primary methods that everybody should probably start with. Vipassana meditation is you focus on your breathing. You just focus on your breathing. You sit down, set a timer for 10, 20, 30 minutes, and you focus on your breathing. And you let your mind do whatever it wants to do, you just have an open awareness of your mind. So just right now for literally 10 seconds, we can do it. We can do a 10 second, 20 second Vipassana. So close your eyes. Notice the breath coming in and out of your nose. And allow your mind to do whatever it is going to do. And then come back to the breath. You don't want to let your mind take you on a ride. You're just being, you're being in the breath and you're holding on to the breath. So the breath is kind of like, if this is an anchor in the ground, you're holding on to this anchor and you're in kind of an ocean, right? And you might be moving around and there might be boats coming by and a boat comes by and it might, the tidal wave might kind of take you that way, but you're holding on to the breath. So then you say, oh, I better, I better get back to my anchor point. So then you get back to the anchor point. Okay, so that's Vipassana. And then one point in meditation is when you have something like a mantra. Another example of one pointed is transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation is not something you have to pay a lot of money for. The mantra I can offer you today, so hum, so hum, so hum. So on the end breath, hum on the out breath. That's mantra meditation. So you're pointing, you're focusing your mind on that one point of so hum, and, and you're not letting your mind drift at all. One pointed meditation is very good for those of you who have a mind that you're like, I can't, my thoughts, I can't stop thinking. Lighting change. It's getting dark outside. Meditation is crucial, but the next practice I'm going to offer is even more important and probably, honestly, probably is more important and that is letting go, surrender. Most of the time we're suppressing, we assume that it's bad, we're suppressing negative emotions. And so we fill our mind with distractions and we fill our mind with things like podcasts and Netflix, you name it. We distract ourselves all day so that we don't have to feel certain emotions. And like I alluded to earlier, suppressing emotions is a definite cause of autoimmunity and all diseases. Letting go is a very important part of healing. So I, I got to show you this. So when you're, let's say this is, this is you, this is your being, this is like the entirety of you. And when you have a, unsavory emotion that you don't want to feel. Let's say it's um, a pit of fear, but you don't want to feel it. So you put your attention on a TV screen. Okay. Um, meanwhile, this thing is still sitting there and it's growing. And, but you, and you feel it growing and you're like, why do I feel so scared? Why am I so anxious? 
Let me not feel this anxiety and let me look at my phone, another little square. And this thing is still not being processed, so it's getting bigger. And then you take your mind and you say, uh, I'm feeling worse, I don't like this emotion. Let me also go ahead and distract myself with, I don't know, drama. You create situations that distract you, relationship stuff, family stuff, just drama. And this thing is now this giant clump of energy that has taken over. And it's like all you feel when you're not distracting yourself. Meanwhile, if you just, when you get a little pebble of emotions, fear, grief, anger, whatever, don't turn out there. You allow it to be felt. So when you feel your emotions, your emotions are happening so that you can feel them. You know, emotions, the only way that they can be processed is through feeling. So when you start to feel it and you process that emotion, then it very slowly or sometimes instantly, it just dissipates and it transmutes and it leaves. And then you've got, then, then you've got a clear, it, it leaves and then you've got, ah, and then maybe another one comes up or maybe three of them at a time come up and then don't turn out there and don't, don't let this stuff build up. You let it go and you surrender it. The only way to surrender, the good news and the bad news, the only way to surrender is by being with this stuff, feeling through it. And sometimes, especially in the beginning, the beginning, if you've never done this before, I can tell you from personal experience, if you've never done this before, you're gonna have a lot of big boulders of pain and sadness and fear and grief. And you're gonna feel those and be okay with it. And that is a process of letting go. Letting go is feeling through your emotions, not identifying with them, not attaching to them, but just feeling through them. And we also are surrendering identity with our disease. This is a big one. This is a huge one. Get off the forums. I mean, go on forums if they help you, but, but don't identify. Don't wear your, your autoimmune issue like a cloak, like a, like a fur jacket or some, like some prized possession. Don't talk about it with every single person you see. Don't, you know, don't wallow in it, even for yourself. You're, sometimes we get so wrapped up in the identity of our autoimmune issues or whatever illness you might have that that's like all there is to what's going on up here. And it's like part of your identity. It's like, I'm so-and-so with blah, blah, blah. No, um, you can let that go. That's part of letting go too. That's part of surrendering. A really important part of healing is letting go of the label of the disease. So in your mind, you've got this idea of, oh no, alopecia areata or whatever, fill in the blank. And then it's this big monster, this alopecia areata, when in reality, in reality, it's a spot on the head. I got a spot on the head. I had a little spot on my head and I don't need to label it. I'm just gonna notice I have a spot on my head. Not much more to it. I got a stupid spot on my head. It's an inconvenience. It's a cosmetic eyesore, but whatever. I, I'm certainly way past at this point in my life. If I happen to get a spot, I notice I have a spot and then I move on with my life and that's it. <laughs> There's nothing more to be done. I have a spot moving on. There's that spot moving right the hell on. That's all there is to it. If I get, if I get any symptom, I notice it, there it is. And then I don't wallow in it. If you wanna learn more about this, these concepts of surrender and letting go and healing through surrender and letting go, please do check out the work of Dr. David Hawkins. These two books, if you get any books for your healing process, 
you can get the diet books that I talked about. You can get Sarah Ballantyne's book and Terry Wall's book and Amy Meyer's book and Doc, Donna Eden's book. But if there's two books, Desert Island books, that will help the healing process that I know for sure will help your healing. It's Letting Go and It's Healing and Recovery by Dr. David Hawkins. These two books are classics. These two books should be read by every doctor, by every person who has a body. These books are incredible. Please do get these books for your healing process. Getting to nurturing your spirit. The first thing I'm gonna recommend is do things that bring you joy. Do something every day that brings you joy, whether it's big things, little things, whatever. Find places that you enjoy. Make plans that bring you joy. Start doing things that just bring you joy. Start, start doing things that make your heart sing. That is spiritual. The very first most important part of a spiritual process is living from your heart and to get to living from your heart start by doing things that bring you joy if i could rewind and go back to when all this started happening i gotta tell you my life was very unbalanced and i had no joy it, there were pockets of joy here and there but if i'm being completely honest with you i wasn't I wasn't joyful. I wasn't doing things that brought me a lot of joy. For me, it's getting out in nature on a regular basis, going out and giving myself little adventures, finding nature, state parks, nature parks in my area and going to those and spending like a whole day just, just hiking is what brings me a lot of joy. Just get into making plans and this world is filled with joyful, joyful pockets they're they're everywhere the other aspect of spirituality it's it's i could give you a long list of spiritual practices and books to read and different takes on different religions and um religion isn't going to get you there by the way spirituality has nothing to do with religion it has nothing to do with gurus it has nothing to do with ashrams or pilgrimages and yoga even and qigong and all those things are pointers to, they say in Buddhist culture, pointers to the moon. All those things are pointing to the moon, but they're not ultimately the moon. What I think is the ultimate spiritual medicine is being here now. And that's not new. I'm definitely not the originator of this thought. However, the autoimmunity forced me into this. And what I found which I'm so grateful for. I would have never ever come to all of these beautiful spiritual, the spiritual richness that I have in my life now without autoimmunity. But what I found is when I'm here, really here right now, when I'm here right now, no matter what's happening, I know, I can feel, I sense, it's an experiential thing. I sense that there is nothing but love, I can feel and know and experience and just, I know it in my bones that there is nothing that exists except for love, that the fabric of my home, the fabric of my body, the fabric of the sky, the fabric of my loved ones, the fabric of my relationships, the fabric of everything that exists is made of pure love. The way that I know that I have hands, I can feel my hands, and I can know and feel without any shadow of a doubt that every single thing around me is made of love. And that's that's all there is to, to all of it. It's all right in front of us all the time. If we would just get out of our minds and surrender and let go. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is just be in the present moment as often as you can. And that's the only spiritual practice that really matters. And I'm relentless in this. I talked about the mental diet that I went on for two years and that was one of the greatest spiritual journeys I've ever taken in my life because it was a constant communion with the divine. So to wrap up this video, I just want to really drive it home that you're not beholden to the labels that modern medicine will give you. You're not beholden to your diagnosis. You're not beholden to anything, anything, anything besides what's inside of your heart 
and your soul. That's all. That's the only thing that, that you're beholden to. And that means that you're, that you're basically good. You're all good. So please do give all this a try. Please do take really deep care of yourself. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.